The fact is, we had four dead Americans. Was it because of a protest, or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? One year ago today, I want you to meet the woman who says today it makes a very big difference. Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. And after 118 congressional hearings, 23 House and Senate reports, 16 months after the attack, an untold number of dollars spent, still no one fired, still no clear answers, still so many questions. And Patricia Smith is just looking for answers. You see, her son, Sean, was killed in that attack. Patricia, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Um, all those hearings, Patricia, we haven't gotten any clear answers. What do you think? Well, we've asked all the questions. They're just not doing any of the answers, and they're letting it go by the way it is. They don't care. Do you think that it, it, this went very high up, that there was a deliberate lack of clear oversight, and they just botch it, they're just not admitting it? That could be. I don't know the reasons behind it. You guys are probably the ones that should find out. I do know that uh, they asked for help. They did not receive help. I would like to know the reason why they didn't get help. What, what is the reasoning behind that? There's got to be a reason why no help was sent after eight requests. And then the only person that could answer this is Hillary. And she won't talk. And nobody will make her. And then she's going to run for, for president. Whoopee. What do you think of that? <laughs> well, I, I do not want her to be president. She makes terrible decisions. And until she can come up and explain why she did what she did and apologize for it and have somebody be, be responsible, claim responsibility for it, I won't be happy. My son is dead. Patricia, the... She said a year ago today, what difference does it make? In other words, at this point, rehashing all of this and what happened, the whole details behind this tragedy, what difference does it make? What, what do you say yes. to that? <laughs> well, it makes a big difference, but not to her, obviously. It's, it's, if it was her child, she would find out. It, it, she does... I'm just totally frustrated because everything I say is turned around. It is not answered. I'm not getting any answers. It's been a year and I'm not getting answers. I get told ridiculous things by the by the administration that uh, I, uh, I don't know. I'm just frustrated, very frustrated. My son is dead and the government doesn't care. And Do it does that, make a difference. Patricia, do you think that... Um, I know in one of the hearings that you had said that you were concerned that uh, if we don't get to the bottom of this, it could and likely will happen again. Others have echoed that view. What is your biggest fear? That if we do not get to the bottom of this, and you're, they, everyone says everyone's playing politics with this, the Democrats for ignoring it, Republicans for wanting to get to the uh -huh. bottom of it, whatever, that, that it will happen again. What, what, do you, what do you think? Absolutely. It's probably been happening all along and nobody's paid any attention to it because what difference does it make? Uh, I hear of all kinds of people getting killed and murdered and molested and everything uh, out there in the other, in, in, in the Arabian lands and all those lands over there. I hear about all those people getting killed and murdered and, and, and chopped up and everything. and. My son was there trying to do something for what the government wanted. He was there, he was doing his job, and he got killed. He was with the ambassador. He was the only one with the ambassador when all this started. I don't know why he was the only one with the ambassador. I don't know why they were together. But they were together doing their job, and somebody ought to tell Hillary who was supposedly the boss, that it does make a difference. Did, did that ever get explained to you? Because I wondered too, Patricia, that whether your son had been assigned to the ambassador on prior occasions or it was just on that, that, that fateful night. Um, but it was never really answered as to what, how he ended up 
uh, essentially alone with, with the ambassador in the middle of all this? I don't know the reason. So, Nobody told me. I didn't ask. Right, right. Um, so looking at this, did your son, you know, if I bring up something unpleasant going back at the timeline here, Patricia, I apologize, and by all means you could tell me to shut up, but did your no, son okay. ever convey to you uh, how dicey things are getting there, or was it just a secret that you didn't relay any of that to you? Uh, your conversation was when, or a letter, or correspondence from him? Well... It was kind of awkward because he was always going someplace. As far as I know, he was always in The Hague. But he was always being sent out on whatever it was that they sent him out on. He was good at what he did, and obviously he, they wanted him there. I don't know why he was there. They haven't told me. I haven't asked because that was his job, and he just giggled and laughed at me and says, Mom, if I told you, I'd have to shoot you. He never wanted you to get worried, did he? No, uh, but there's, there's been, when he was uh, in Iraq, he told me he was living in a, in a trailer and working in a castle, in a palace. And then he sent me this, this, this tape or whatever it was of a bomb going off. And the thing, all you heard was, woo, boom. And then he came back on the line. He said, you hear that, mom? Yes, I did. Yes, mm. I did. Patricia, I'm so sorry, and thank you for taking the time. Mm-hmm. Patricia Smith, her son. I want an answer. Please, get me an answer on that. Why? It's a good question. Why? Just a... why? Patricia, thank you. Um, this is something I want to step back and, and ask you a question. Why? This is for all of you viewers. I'm going to show you two different things, and I want you to just take it in. First, I want you to watch coverage of this. In the past few weeks alone, she has fought illness and injury, including hospitalization. She leaves her post as the most admired woman in the world in the Gallup poll for the 11th year in a row. Well, today, Hillary Clinton was under fire and at times fired back. After a fall, a concussion and a blood clot, Hillary Clinton showed rare public emotion, reflecting the toll Benghazi has taken on her. It was a valedictory that showed her indignation and emotion as she ends this tenure on the public stage. But today, this woman who has traveled the world as America's top diplomat came to the Hill ready for a fight. I want to talk about the hearings this week. You mm -hmm. had a very long day. Also, how is your health? Okay, now I'd like you to watch coverage of this. Calls at this hour for the feds to step in, investigate the explosive emails that show Christie's aides closing highway lanes on America's busiest bridge. The story of what some are calling an abuse of power and an act of political retribution. A potential presidential candidate caught up in scandal. Tonight on Nightline, the boss. Damn, man, I'm governor. Could you just shut up for a second? Caught up in a scandal. He says he's humiliated. And I come out here today. Sad. I'm sad. I'm sad. And sorry. I, I am sorry. It's a far cry from his usual. And I have no interest in answering your question. People dead. People caught in traffic. Two different series of coverage. You notice anything? Well, these two guests do. Tim Graham of the Media Research Center, townhall.com's Katie Pavlich. Katie? Well, Neil, I think that the most telling line in that, that package that you just ran was when they said, showing the toll that Benghazi has taken on Hillary Clinton. Uh, you know, the media has, outside of Fox News and a couple other outlets, have been more concerned about protecting the reputation of Hillary Clinton for 2016 than getting the answers that people like Patricia Smith want. They only want the answers. This is about accountability, and I hope, I hope, that someone will hold Hillary Clinton accountable for her lack of accountability when it comes to this issue. Tim, I just hope someone holds someone accountable in the media for its disparate coverage. Um, that's another thing I hope for, but, but what, what do you say? Well, a year ago, you know, she gave this testimony and we had waited months for it. And, uh, and you, you saw the way they treated it. The package really illustrates it. But after the testimony, then she did interviews 
like you showed Steve Croft. She did an interview with Nightline with Cynthia McFadden. She did an interview with Andrea Mitchell. And in every case, it was just like this. How are you? How, how do you feel? How, you know, there was none of the questions that the victims' families would have to ask about this. And that is, how could this happen? The media here is not supposed to care about who's running in 2016. None of us knows whether Chris Christie or Hillary Clinton are going to run. None of us knows if we're going to be alive in 2016. Why don't you focus on what happened here? And that is, why did they fail to provide security to these embassies? We've, we've made, asked this question over and over again. That's what all the time's been spent on in Congress. It is not the question that our media seems to care about. All they talk about is, can you, anybody stop Hillary? That's the latest cover of Time magazine. How about, can anybody stop the media from being this biased. Well, or just being this tilted. And I think, Katie, that mm -hmm. begs a question. You know, I'm not dismissing uh, all the investigations into Chris Christie and what he knew right. or his people knew and when they knew it regarding a traffic jam. The fact of the matter is, though, that if that story is about ultimate accountability, certainly the same should be applied to mm -hmm. what happened in Benghazi, whether it stops at Hillary Clinton's desk or goes still higher or in between. But that accountability and the media mm -hmm. demanding the accountability that they do of a governor in a state regarding a traffic jam, they do not seem to be applying to lives lost in a disaster. That's what I'm saying, that, that, that consistency was and is in order. Well, and I couldn't agree more. And I think that the example with the Chris Christie situation is how the media should behave. They should be asking questions. They shouldn't go on a witch hunt. But they definitely should be doing their jobs to ask serious questions about the abuse of power, about the accountability. And again, it's coming down to this idea now that we have four dead Americans and no answers. And it isn't necessarily because Hillary Clinton isn't giving them. It's because just like you showed, these people in the media sit down for this event or this interview with, with the former Secretary of State, and they're more concerned concerned about how she's feeling or how her day is going, how long her days have been or what she's been doing since she left the office of Secretary of State, what she's doing to take care of herself, rather than asking the hard questions about, you know, what happened there and why hasn't the government been forthcoming with talking about how this could have been prevented. No, you're right. But in the case of, of the secretary and in the case of the governor, it's not about them and how they're feeling. It's not about them and how they're holding up. It shouldn't up. be. Right. It's about actions that were conducted under their auspices that resulted in a lot of a lot of folks not holding up. And in the case of Benghazi, four of them losing their lives. Big difference. Big difference mm -hmm. in coverage. Big difference in severity. Big bad on the media. Thank you both. Absolutely. Thanks, Neil. We are already hearing, by the way, that the president is fixing his State of the Union address well to fix income inequality. Well, Dr. Carson has seen some of his fixes, and he is fixing to tell the president what he can do with his fixes. No holds barred. The good doctor with some pretty good advice. Next. Today we're going to play a little game. Which 4G LTE map has the most coverage? This isn't real difficult. Pretty obvious to me. I'm going to have to say Verizon. Verizon has... That's right! The choice is obvious. <laughs> Verizon's super-fast 4G LTE network is over three times larger than any other 4G LTE network. Now get one, two, or even $300 off a new smartphone, depending on the smartphone you trade in, on America's largest, most reliable 4G LTE network. That's powerful. Verizon. Now get a free LG G2 with a 13-megapixel camera. Wow, this hotel is amazing. Oh, no. Who are you? Who are you? Wrong answer. Wait, Daddy, this is Blair. He booked this room with Priceline Express deals and saved a